Best ways to present. Now I'm slipping slightly into an NLP territory here. Because you guys have to present all the time. And I just want to talk a little bit about, particularly perhaps with my NLP and my sales director hat, about best ways to present. Tell the story. Start with the strategy and tell the story. And you love your boards, don't you? So you get, you, it's like a tease. It's like you know, when you're in a reality show and it's uh, who's been evicted. You love your boards, you keep your boards there and you start talking. Let me tell you, most of the time we're not listening to what you're saying because we're so desperate to see what's behind the boards. But that's okay, I don't think I'm ever going to change that. But make sure what you start with is the strategy. So go back to telling me what I wanted and, and tell it as a story and ask questions to check understanding. So rather than going, this is what we've done. So, what we wanted was a piece of creative that connected with the... 14 to 22 market, uh, is that right? Yes. So it becomes an interactive process. So by the time you turn your board over, I've nodded so much because everything you've said, I'm checking for understanding, yes, that's what I want, yes, that's what I want, yes, if you can deliver that, yes, there it is, I'm still nodding, yes, brilliant. Use positive language. I mean, this is something I observed with the top of the top of the agency people in London, that they present with negative language. This is what you don't want. There's a real, real amazingly powerful thing that you can do, which is presupposing ideas. Now I'm starting to get a bit Darren Brown. But using negative language, if I say to you all, you don't think about a blue tree. Whatever you do, don't think about a blue tree. Do not think about a blue tree. You're all thinking about blue trees. You can't help it because the unconscious mind doesn't understand negative demands. So when you're saying something, if you're saying, we didn't want to do this, or we can't do this, or we don't. All you're doing is telling the client the negative. So you tell them what you do want. This is actually not just about presenting. This is about generally everything. Tell them what you do want. Use avoid I think, we think. I think this piece of creative, we think this is really powerful. We think this is the direction you need to go. What you're doing there is presenting what? An opinion. Because you're saying, we think, I think. And I can't even tell you. You probably don't realise you do it. This is a thing called the lost performative. If you drop the we think, I think. So if the sentence, for example, is, this piece of work is going to deliver, as opposed to, I think this piece of work is going to deliver, there's a very different feeling that you get to hearing that. Because what you do is you're presupposing it's going to deliver. And what's amazing is no one messes with it. No one says, well, how do you know that? Particularly if you say, this piece of work is going to deliver, so actually we're recommending we spend money into November with it, you end up focusing the sentence on the bit about we're going into November. You're actually presupposing the first bit is true. You're all looking at me a little bit, okay, yes, I think I get what you mean, I'm not quite sure. Try it. Try it today, because we're all very British, and we say things in emails like, in my opinion, as I see it, in French, à mon avis. But actually, if you drop that in an email... It's a, people don't fuck with it. It's amazing. It's a magic thing I've all given you there. So try it today and see the power of placing that assumption in your communication. Be yourself. As I am today, use language that you're comfortable with. And that doesn't mean swear a lot. But what I mean is don't try and use big words. Don't be overcomplicated. Just speak as if you're a real person. Be human. Capture detailed feedback. I think I'm starting to repeat myself quite a lot. Confirm everything writing. We've heard that one before. Consider your audience. I don't know how many of you have done any stuff um, about preferences, myers briggs stuff, fire B stuff, about how people like to receive information. So think about, okay, we're going in to present to the two brand managers and the marketing director, maybe the CEO, who knows. How do those people like to receive information? Now, I am a very big picture person. If you want to get me excited, tell me about the party we're going to have when, at the end when we've finished it. Whereas certain people in my team, I had a head of 2012 who was a, a project person. She'd freak out with the end picture. She wanted to know the detailed steps of how we're going to get there. So when you're going in to present, think about your audience. Because we're all probably big picture people. But actually, if who you're presenting to isn't, you'll lose them. What are their priorities? So you're going in the room. It might just be, I need something to get in press on Tuesday. Think about what they're... And you'll spend ages talking about the research you've done. Think about what their priorities are. 
do they have a sensory preference? I don't know if any of you guys have done any work on auditory or visual. Again, you, most of you are, are very likely to be visual people. But sometimes your clients might be auditory people or kinesthetic people. So if they're a kinesthetic person, the way you can pick up on how, what sort of person they are is the language that they use. If they talk about how everything looks all the time and use l literal visual language, they'll be a visual. If they talk about how everything feels, they're kinesthetic. So match their sensory preference with the way that you talk to them. Consider their feedback style. Monitor, anyone done Belbin? Teamwork Belbin stuff? So monitor evaluators are people who are all about taking in data and processing. They're like calculators. So most CEOs are monitor evaluators. You tell them to give feedback straight away, they'll just close up because they need to go away and think about it and come back to you. Whereas we want everything now. So think about how they like to receive information and give feedback. Particularly, how do you deal with differences of opinion? I'm sure many of you have been in a piece of work where your brand manager loves it, your head of marketing doesn't, your digital guy thinks it might work. How do you deal with that? I know I've put my agency through sitting in front of my team arguing and me, you know, me being the, the coach in the middle trying to deal with them. Let, don't get involved in that. That's not your problem. Give them time. Go away. Come back to me with consolidated feedback. Because they're what, what, what tends to happen, maybe if you've got a global CMO and a local marketing director, is who is the master? You're the master. You know, who, is, who are you supposed to listen to? So let them manage that. Let them come back to you with consolidated feedback in writing so you don't end up in the middle of that relationship. I can see lots of wry smiles. So this obviously happens quite a lot. Look after yourself. So this end bit now, I'm just going to do a little bit of high performance stuff so you can all skip out the room being gutted that you all got really drunk last night and ate pizza. No, that's not always about. So this is what we call our performance pie. I don't know if anyone has seen anything like this before, but if you think about the chunks of your day that you spend time doing, which one are you doing most of? Of tactical, physical, mental, emotional, contextual, technical? Which one do you think you spend most of your time doing? Sorry, what was that? Well, that's good if you are, but I would challenge that most of your time is tactical. No? I mean, most people, it's what's my to-do list? What have I got to do now? What am I doing today? What am I doing this week? Looking at the end of your nose, what have you got to do now? And technical. So most people, for example, you're preparing for a meeting, you're looking at what have I got to say? Do my slides work? Do my boards in order? Very, very tactical and very technical. That's where we tend to, there's nothing wrong with it, apart from this lady who's very mental, um, but that might be another, what she does out of work. But the tactical and the technical is where we intend to invest most of our time. Now, when you're an athlete, you probably can run as fast as you can. Kelly Holmes, who's someone we work with a lot, to study how she is a double gold medal winner. So she knew, going into her Olympics, that she was running as fast as she could. She wasn't going to get faster. So the three months before a race is all mental. It's all visualising, how am I going to get across that line before everyone else? When Sally Gunnell won her gold medal, she wasn't sure whether it was really happening because she'd visualised it so many times to that nth degree, crossing the line, what she'd do, how she'd feel, where she'd fall on the floor, that she wasn't even sure it was real. And we don't do that. We rock up, we've been up since three, because we're late for a pitch and we've been eating coffee, drinking coffee, and we've been eating pizza, and we expect to walk into a room. As long as our slides work, we haven't prepared mentally. Emotionally, connectedness, support. When I first did, worked with K2, I had a very hot boyfriend who was a complete emotional drain. Remember him? Um, complete emotional drain. So I'd get home from a 14-hour day and he'd suck the life out of me. And going through this process made me realise, outside of work, I had no emotional support. Making sure that you are looking after yourself emotionally, contextual. Hands up, who works with someone who just drains their energy? You can be in a meeting with them, and they just suck the life out of you. So before you're going into a big presentation, stay away from them. You're all naming people. That wasn't what the process was. Stay away from them. Stay away from those people that suck the life out of you. Think about who's on your team, and I don't mean your physical team. Yes, it's all, everyone's naming names now. Um, think about who's on your physical team. So who's on Team Emma? 
So I had a guy at Eurostar who was the head of product who was just, you know, if I knew, if I spent a little bit of time with him, I'd be lifted. You know, there's some people that are just funny when you're around them and maybe sometimes not. But yeah, I think about those people. Who are those people that lift me? So before you're going to a big meeting, hang out with them for a bit. Making sure if you've got a cup of energy, you've got people that are taking bits out of it because your team do, who are you going to get to put the energy back in the top? And most of us don't do enough of this, plus physical. Again, sleep, sleep. We don't sleep enough in this industry. We don't sleep enough, we don't exercise enough, we don't rest enough, we drink too much coffee, we don't drink enough water. Those things totally affect your performance. To an athlete, this is their biggest tool. I'm not calling myself a tool, but this is their biggest tool. And it is to us as well, our brains, our performance, our personalities, not our slides or our boards, it's us. So make sure you're investing in you. Make sure that you're focusing on the tactical and the technical as well as all the other stuff. Think about your context. Think about who you're hanging out with. Think about your emotional preparation. When I was preparing for today, I said to Liz, I haven't looked at the slides today or last night. I, talked to, I thought about, I'm going on the Eurostar, funny enough, I'm going to Paris this afternoon. And I was thinking about my cab journey to St Pancras and how I wanted to feel. So think about the phone call back to the office after a presentation. Think about, I nailed it. Go there, hear what you heard, feel what you felt, see what you saw, do it. Go there, choose that state, choose your mood, rather than worrying about your boards and your slides. Think about your outcome, think about your client's outcome, think about how you want your client to feel. Because we all, if you're programming your unconscious mind to create a future, you'll deliver it because you leak from every ounce of your being. If you walk in there thinking, shit, 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 they're not going to buy it, shit, 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 your language will be negative, your, your, everything about you, even your hair, everything will give you away. Every single piece of you because language is so much more, communication is so much more than the words you say. So program yourself to deliver that future and you will. See, I've gone all Darren Brown. So that's the end of my spiel. Oh my God, the timing is impeccable. See, planning. Um, <clears throat> I would just put this slide up as a thing to think about because we all have these sessions and walk away going, well, that was pretty cool. And I just wanted to say to you, just capture some of this now, write it down, confirm back to me in writing. No, don't have to. Um, but think about what, as a result of the last 45 minutes, you might actually start doing. Maybe it's the visualising your outcome. Maybe it's putting exercise in your diary or making sure you drink more water than coffee. Because every time you drink a cup of coffee, you're taking away exactly that amount of water from your body. What you'd stop doing, saying up till three in the morning after, before, the night before a pitch. Continue doing. Well, actually, I'm doing that well. I'm drinking enough water, so I'm going to make sure I... And then do differently. Actually, I'm going to approach the communication structure in my client relationship in a different way. So just think about some of those things, just to make sure that I don't walk out of the room and all this gets forgotten. That is the end of me. Well, I think that's been a brilliant wake-up call this morning. Some really open and honest insight from Emma. Uh, largely unrepeatable, but there you go. And I'm, I'm guessing that there's probably about half a dozen agency CEOs who were on that Eurostar pitch list who should be watching the video afterwards. So if you work in one of those agencies, let them know. Um, and I can tell you, Emma taught me that um, I think, we think trick um, a few weeks ago. I promise you it really works. Um, really, really try it. It's brilliant. It's very, very powerful. Um, but it's not very often you get to um, quiz um, a proper uh, marketing heavy hitter. So let's start Q&A. Um, Helen's got a microphone, so she'll kind of run around to where you are. Um, but hands up. Who's got, who wants to ask the first question? Come on, be brave. Hello. Hello. Um, my name's Katie. I'm from Nexus H in Tumbridge Wells. Um, I just wanted... Huh? You did well this morning. Yeah, I know. We were up really early. <laughs> I'm very tired. <laughs> but I've drunk lots of water, so it's fine. Um, I had a quick question. On the getting started, um, you said about setting up clear meeting structure. Yeah. Sometimes with some of our clients, we have a difficulty. We have a set slot every week. 
Um, but actually, a lot of the time, they don't attend the meetings or call us in the morning, or sometimes we're just waiting on the conference call, and they just don't turn up. Is there any prompts or advice that you'd give us on securing that and making them do it? Or Have you asked them why? Um, yeah, he, he always says, like, oh, I've got, a, oh, I've got another meeting, or oh, I'm just too busy today, and we'll <coughs> say, okay, well, you know, can we reschedule? What's your meet you know, what's your diary like? Um, but he just never comes back to us with when we can do it. Has he got a PA? No. Ah. He's, they're very under-resourced. Um, I mean, it's a difficult one. I think that the most important thing is that you're doing what you can do. And this isn't about saying you can't create... I mean, not all marketing directors are as fabulous as me. I get that. <laughs> but you, you can only do so much. And I think what today is about is making sure that you are delivering what you can deliver. And just knowing that you're on the other end of that conference call, even though it feels horrendous to you to be sat there, you're giving him the comfort. In a way, the fact that he doesn't feel the need to always be there is a sign he feels safe that you're doing a good job. So even though for you it's a wasted time, I would stick with it. I'd stick with it, I'd try and, do, you know, I'm sure you've tried different things, reminding him the day before, checking in with him, you know, maybe saying, should we move to the show every two weeks? You know, how often do you have real sort of account reviews where you're going through, how's this working for you? Asking for feedback on your performance, all that stuff might kick out. Actually, those weekly calls are a bit of a pain in the ass for me. Can we make them two weekly? Or can you do it, send me a, a Monday morning fight, you know, one pager on what's going on and ask me if there's anything you need me to come back on? So just have that open conversation. I hope that's useful. Another question. Yeah. You spoke a lot to us as kind of individuals and talk about us kind of being go to people, but obviously as the marketing director you're gonna deal Sorry. Um, it's all right. Uh, as the marketing director, you're going to deal with the, the people that are highest in the agency team, your account directors, your uh, senior account managers, so on. Um, how do you feel the junior members of the team fit into your thinking when you're in a meeting? I think it was what I said before about trusting that the team is feeding back to me. I mean, this is what the account matrix is really important. So for you, it's knowing who you're dealing with. So if your relationship is with the brand manager, then, be, then let it be with the brand manager and do all those things for that person. You know, that brand manager will have other things that are, that are keeping them awake at night. You know, it might be part of it, how do I become a senior brand manager? You know, they might have little projects on the side that are slightly left field in terms of what they're doing. So all of that applies, just change it to whoever you're, you're dealing with. I mean, for me, every single person involved in that team should be a go-to person, should be the person that goes, we'll sort this out. Because as a collective, you're my individual representatives within the agency. So same applies, just maybe to a different level. That's but great. For me, you're the stars of the future, and I've worked with agencies long enough to see someone come in you know, as a junior, end up senior, and then, you know, and that's great. That's great. And, and to learn, see, see people learning on a brand is brilliant. Thanks very much. Um, how can we help clients kind of communicate more? So I kind of, um, I guess my kind of day-to-day -day client um, gets kind of, uh, she thinks she's kind of expressed everything that she wants and gets, sometimes can get quite, quite frustrated when she feels she kind of, it hasn't been effectively communicated and actually she's kind of retained a lot of it in her head. How can we help kind of get it, pull it out of her head and really kind of understand what she wants? Well, I think funneling's a really good idea. So if she says, I like it, make sure that what you're saying is what do you like you know or if there's a problem so funnel 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 so you get it's that that's about the detail so rather than sort of resting on your laurels or that was positive feedback get under the skin of just check everything that's there um, I I'm not quite sure what, ele what things you want her to communicate on but you know I mean have you got regular communications are you taking her out of the office a lot you know, that, those, you know, those things often work that she, over lunch she'll start opening up when she's feeling a bit more relaxed. And it might be that the reason she's not communicating is because all those things that are keeping her awake at night are buzzing around her head. So, you know, those are a couple of things that you can do. But funneling is, I mean, it's a classic sales technique and it's so powerful because you get so much out of it. So try where possible, draw little funnels on your page at the beginning of a meeting. And when you're hearing bits of feedback, think, oh, I could funnel that. There's a bit more detail, let me get under the skin of that. So help her, because she might not spontaneously know what it is she's got to say. So pull it out of her, in a lovely way. Thank you. Hello. Um, 
With strategy and creative, there's always a difference in opinion. Um, how have agencies successfully persuaded you that their their strategy is or creative is is right? Um, what have, what tools have they used to say to reinforce what they're showing you to to make sure you've got the confidence in them? Customer, the customer, the customer, the customer. If the customer's at the heart of it, if insights at the heart of it, then get fact based because fact-based evidence is really hard to mess with. So get, get, get insight, get research, and, and research that's relevant. So one of the things that happened in the pitch was what they researched, the whole brief was about this sort of future, but the research was about, they researched people asking them about their experiences now. So it wasn't relevant. So relevant research that, that's with a relevant demographic that's, that's answering that's very hard to argue with. If it, 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 you know, I appreciate that's an expense that you, you, know, you need to undergo. But if you really believe this is the thing that's going to work. Plus, nowadays, there's so much, I imagine, behavior <laughs> economics behind what you're presenting. It's, it's very rare that you just go in with a, here's a pretty picture, do you like it? There's bound to be a lot of stuff behind it. Um, so nuts and bolts, that's the answer to that one. Is that, is that yeah, answer that's question? Fine. Thanks. Um, what's your experience with procurement? and trying to make sure that every, you know, every, everything's um, fair on both sides. Do you have any experience with that in terms of the starting out the agency relationship? Yeah, I mean, it's what I said at the beginning. There's that pressure of we need to pull the fee down and then the agency is saying, well, you're not going to get the seniors. You know, you're only going to get two hours a week. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. And again, that's really a good question because it means you're thinking about what the challenges of being a marketing director outside of looking at the process you guys are involved in. Um, I think it's, it's hard and it's getting harder because there's no business nowadays where, you know, I think now what the good thing is that marketing has become much more transparent. So you can actually go back to a finance team and say, look at what we delivered. It's so much more tangible than the old above the line kick out and hope it works because you can show real behavior change, you can show real engagement and it's much easier you know it makes it much more tangible to go to finance with so it's in a way it's harder because everyone's being squeezed but in a way it's easier because you can prove it more um, but yeah I mean it's something you need to help us with so going into show showing it showing me hours for example oh look you're gonna get this many hours I don't want to know that really a procurement person will want to go into that detail but actually what I want to see is what you're gonna deliver for me and I expect to have the best brains on my business so it's a, yeah, it's a difficult challenge. Hi there. Um, you talked a lot about um, going out for drinks with agencies, and I just wanted... No, um, well, we always try and get our clients out for drinks, and um, we're in London, they're outside of London, and sometimes it can be a bit difficult to yeah. you know, find a good middle ground. Um, like, what, what's, like, the best agency night out you've, you've ever had, and what... what <laughs> Like what made it? What made it so good? And <coughs> what insights it, did you give? Like just is it Chatham some House tips. rules. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. Actually, there was an agency called Someone. They're part of Chime, and um, they were just a brilliant agency, really small agency, who totally wrapped themselves around us as a business, and did I well, did the whole visual identity work with them. And their their nights out were brilliant because it was always low key, and that we'd start in the pub, but then there'd be sort of elements of unexpectedness. You know, like I said, you'd have to take them to the best place in the world. They took us to some bar in Shoreditch, you guys probably know it. You kind of go through a cupboard. You go through the cupboard and yeah, we'd never been there. And then we got this cauldron of cocktails. And you know, so little things like that, just elements of surprise. But also it's just not, not spending too much money because then you're going, hmm, this is my fee you're spending on that 19 pound cocktail. So not, you know, doing something and, or, you know, th thinking about what they like. If they're a vegetarian, don't take them to Hawksmoor. You know, so just thinking about what they need and you know but somewhere that's not too loud so you can talk just that right thing so yeah that that night out with someone i can't even remember the rest of it but it was just one of those bonkers nights where everywhere they took us was just more drinks and more brilliant and just by the end of the night everyone was so bonded it was just so yeah think about that think about the environment if you've got a really long thin table that's not going to work um, but yeah, I mean, do that. I, I appreciate it's hard. Invite them to awards. That's always a good one. If you get, get a table at awards, because they'll tend to say, well, we'll make an effort for that and we'll book a hotel. And those things can go on till six in the morning. Well, they used to when I was going to them anyway. But yeah, do that. That's a good insight. That's one thing you take away from here. I haven't failed. <laughs> but I hope that was useful. And thank you again for coming. I really appreciate your lots of active listening. It was really good.
Thanks very much, Emma.